On the podcast today, we will dissect chapter 18 of the Tao Te Ching, which makes up the 18th episode of the 81 Meditations on the Tao Te Ching. And like the previous episodes, Guyang will read the Jafu Feng and Jane English translation, and I will read the Derek Lin translation. When the great Tao is forgotten, kindness and morality arise. When wisdom and intelligence are born, the great pretense begins. When there is no peace within the family, filial piety and devotion arise. When the country is confused and in chaos, loyal ministers appear. The great Tao fades away. There is benevolence and justice. Intelligence comes forth. There is great deception. The six relations are not harmonious. There is filial piety and kind affection. The country is in confused chaos. There are loyal ministers. So the essence of this chapter is basically what happens to the world when we forget the Tao, when we are not at one with the Tao, and we turn the Tao into some sort of ideal. Yes. As during that time, especially what Confucius actually did, he turned the Tao into some sort of ideal that people need to live by rather than being at one with the Tao naturally. Yes. Again, these are the, uh, very Confucius virtues. These are the kindness, morality, wisdom, intelligence, philia, piety, devotion, and being loyal and having a loyal ministers as leaders. But again, I would say they are virtues, but at the same time, they are not. Because again, as you mentioned, they are artificial, artificially created to make the society and community harmonious. Again, that is uh, artificially. So kindness and morality arise because there is no kindness and morality, right? In the complete uh, Taoist perspective. Mm. And wisdom and t- intelligence are born because there is n- no uh, wisdom and intelligence innately in the society, right? You feel uh, piety and devotion arise because there is no true love and uh, trust between uh, family members, yes. right? Yeah. That is why this concept has to be introduced to families to practice these things for other, for other family members. Yes. Yeah, it's essentially what happens when the Tao fades from our thoughts. So if we look at even at China where Taoism is from, we see culturally through the history of thousands of years of, in China where the Tao had, was popular and then faded from people's thoughts. It was popular again. You see kind of this, this ebb and flow in their, in their culture. Uh, obviously, the Tao is not isolated to China, but uh, the tradition originates from China. And so, but the point is, as you said, once the Tao, we forget the Tao, we create artificial laws as opposed to the natural way of the Tao, the natural law of the Tao. Yes. Uh, like a Taoist, for example, does not need to be forced or coerced into acting a certain way. Mm. Their goodness is natural. Mm. They don't need to be taught to be good because they haven't gone through a large scale socialization process or they've walked away from that socialization process because they've pinpointed that the socialization process itself is what creates beasts. Yes. Then we need these artificial virtues to tame the beasts. Mm-hmm. And this is a different way of thinking about it, right? Because even in Western cultures and societies, people think that we need certain systems to make us behave a certain way, but often the system itself makes us act in the opposite way yes. to the way that they want and it all originates from the wrong perspective same as confucius it's a, a, it originates from the idea that we are all beasts from birth mm-hmm. but Taoism says no we're not we're not beasts from birth if you look at the way children are children are very close to the Tao, and so they don't have the concerns and the seriousness of adults until education comes in yeah. and then we start to train the intellect we start to train this and that and then we you know, we divide the world up into this and that, and then we become serious about the divisions that we've created due to the education process. Again, these virtues are uh, important in a chaotic society, obviously. Better to 
have these virtues than not. That's quite obvious. But again, the problem is that socialization comes from these artificial, artificially created laws and virtues, and that uh, these artificial virtues innate flaw is it came from human mind, right? And human mind can only be limited under certain circumstance, circumstances, and they usually cannot be that natural, right? Because uh, these virtues have been created uh, under certain condition, which is in chaotic society, so that people come together, the scholars, I guess, come together in how to make this society better. Again, effort is needed and important, but in the end, we have to kind of uh, give a bit of a distance from upholding that idea itself, because that again becomes a concept, and that again that came from the limited human thought, the human mind. So when you do uphold these uh, artificially created laws and and virtues, then again, as you mentioned, this beast come start to. Uh, come about mm. that's what happens again because these l concepts that created by limited human mind cannot cover all all different kind of people's nature right it's, it's not natural again no, no. some people will be good at playing that game some people won't be good at playing exactly. that game yes and that's a, an, an innate thing to their character and, and their specific lead, their organic pattern. So particularly if we look at Confucius, right, it's one man who created a socio-religious economic system for everyone else. But the Taoists realized that this doesn't work for a lot of people, this system. It might work for Confucius, it might work for his loyal ministers, but it doesn't work for the, the larger population. And that's what we find in any society, actually, where we have all of these artificial rules and regulations and we find people who f find it difficult to live within that system. Yes. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, criminals, uh, you know, obviously some criminals are just criminal in their nature, you know. If it wasn't, even the system wasn't there, they might be trying to steal your, your cattle or something like this. Uh, but... The point is, is, is often is, the Dow's perspective is it's the actual system that creates the person who wants to steal the cattle. You know, it, it might not be an innate thing, actually. It might be something that's happened through the socialization process. And because they're not good at playing the game, mm. they try to get a leg up in the game by stealing your cattle or, or something of this nature. Yeah. And in some sense, we're all on the same field, right? Every human is on the same field. And some of us play the game better than others. Some of us are worried about our own plight in life, while others are just getting on with their life and they're just moving forward with the tools at their, at their disposal. But often, especially in this day and age, a lot of people are playing the victim mentality. And in playing the victim mentality, you're not sort of progressing with your life because you're, you're kind of concerned with your own plight, as opposed to trying, trying to find or navigate a way kind of out of this game in some sense. To, to align with the Tao, trying to remember the Tao yes. as opposed to continually forgetting the Tao, worrying about your position in your life. Yes. You need to, you need to remember. Mm -hmm. You need to remember the Tao. Yeah. Um, again, as I was studying this chapter, I come across this idea that, that in society where there is a, a society where they emphasize a lot of ethical values, meaning there is no ethical values truly, within society organically mm. right mm. and again there is no when there is no enough love then they start talking about love mm. right mm. like i've seen this um like advertisement of a like a tv series or something like that on a bus saying uh, love me it was called love me actually i instantly thought that that means love me that's actually most people want mm -hmm. not most people everyone wants mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but that is to show how much no l lack of love 
around the world, mm. around the uh, societies. And again, this was kind of, um, uh, it, it came to me a lot that when society is mentally ill, there is this blind faith on religious movement. Mm -hmm. yep. And that is a lot, not necessarily religious movement per se, but some sort of movement yep. when, when there is no like a mentally healthy people around yep. right so that also reflects the, the way the world is at the moment yeah i think well that goes from it starts in the family mm -hmm. right and then it's projected into you know the like you said with religion we need to somehow cultivate this kind of universal love which we actually inherently have deep down but it we create these systems because some of us are well we feel like we're lacking this love in our life this yes. this inherent love that we actually have for each other when we get a lot of the garbage out of the way of our perception so you know a lot of people will attach to certain associations religious racial sex go down the line football your football team mm. but if you move all of that out of the way you'll notice that humans are humans and exactly and we're all much more similar than what you think and there's actually an innate love there for your brothers and sisters of the world and so when you like you mentioned like when we lack this love especially when we look at the family then you need such systems for for this like filial piety and sort of a contrived kind of affection for for your other family members. In in the in the Tao Te Ching, they, in this chapter, it mentions the six relations. So the six relations are parents, children, older siblings, younger siblings, husband, and wife. So they're they're the six dynamics of a family. I mean, you could say, oh, obviously, there's grandparents and this and that. But in the Tao Te Ching, they they mention these six uh, immediate yes. uh, relations. And once they fall into decay, then when we forget the Tao, there's discord in the family. So then it's necessary for filial piety, kind affection, so forth and so on. But if we, if we remembered the Tao or if we knew the Tao, understood the Tao and practiced the Tao in our daily life, and we would just live naturally. Mm. You naturally love not just your family, but everyone else, and you, you you respect everyone else. You don't need to be told that. Yes. You don't need to be coerced into believing that. Yes. And that's the difference between a proper Taoist and the average Joe. Mm. The proper Taoist doesn't need to be told, "Hey, you need to love thy neighbor and so forth and so on." And it's like, of course, I already do anyway. Why are you telling me that? Like you're verbalizing something that's already innate to my character. And that's the difference. So the society that we've created, because we've created, as you were mentioning, like with too many rules and regulations and all of these, like you said, the ethical, like if we have all of these ethics, it means we don't have these ethics, yes. then that's the foundation of a sick society. Mm -hmm. But if we just let everyone live their life according to their, their own nature, then that love would naturally arise. Sure, there may be some bad seeds, but if you've seen in the world, most people, majority of people, are good people. Yes. And we are so short-sighted mm. because we might go onto Twitter and we see all the trolls on Twitter. And look, there's a lot of them. But in comparison to the population in the world, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not even a drop in the ocean. Yeah, again, like, as you first-hand experience with this, especially with um, Philia Party, is uh, in any Far Eastern... Uh, Far Eastern Asian countries, especially in Korea and Japan uh, and China, of course, uh, filial piety is something that, as a child, that you have to. It's kind. Of, it's it's kind of a duty and obligation. And again, that itself is very Confucian, isn't it? Yeah. So they made it a thing, mm. right, as an obligation for every child to practice, to love and love and devote to your parents but again that's why if people if a child someone who don't practice in a very conventional way but they do truly love the parents mm. but because they don't practice in a very materialistic mm -hmm. 
and very showing off kind of way so that those people become like a, a bad children mm-hmm. like you, uh, you you don't show the the practicing fly party to your own parents and you kind of get distanced from family or you get abandoned from family or you get um, ashamed mm. in front of other relatives, yeah. which happens, as you know, so often mm. in Far East Asian countries. So that, again, that brings that so-called beast, but they're not really beast, but they label, they get labeled as beast mm. in the society. Mm. They do love their family members no matter what, but because they don't practice in a way they think it's correct, Mm. which is philopiety kind of way, so then you get to be labeled as a, you know, like the person who don't even uh, love the parents and this and that, but they don't really know that person. Well, the irony is with that, example is it's actually the parents who are behaving like beasts mm. do you see the, the the system of thought of flyer piety this ideology is making them like beasts yeah because they can't even accept their own child i mean that's a no-brainer right if you're a parent you accept and love your your child no matter what it doesn't matter if they don't agree with some sort of socio-economic religious political system that they've been inculcated with if they're just naturally living their life according to the Tao or how nature is i mean what's there not to like it's only the system that interferes with them seeing their child as they truly are yes and that's that's the problem that's what Lao Tzu's point is is that if you're seeing this on a family level then the society is fundamentally sick mm. because everything begins. The unit of the family is the is the seed of everything, yes. of government, of nation. Every sort of group ideology that we have originates from the family, the unit of the family. So, the idea that your parents don't love you because you don't fall in line with some sort of system is really outrageous when you think about it. And you don't just see this in, in Far East Asia. I mean, you see this also in the West and, and other places like mm-hmm. in Africa and, and South America and places like that. And there's always this concept of ah, like you get hit for not respecting your elders. And it's not, not like the kids are not respecting their elders. Why they're getting hit is because they don't know the, the common etiquette. Mm. They, but of course, like we've all been childs. We've all been a child and we've all had love and affection for our grandparents, for example. Yes. Who's ever been cheeky to their grandparents? Mm-hmm. I mean, you only be cheeky to your grandparents if you kind of really know them and it's, and it's in a playful yeah, way. of course. But you don't inherently be rude to your grandparents. Yes. Like, I've, I've never seen a child like mm-hmm. that. It's only when you bring in these rules of, like, hitting them for not not supporting a certain system where you should respect your elders. And, the, and it's only the parents' perspective of them not respecting their elders too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And look, if they were misbehaving, you know, maybe. Yeah. But it's not very common as what people believe. Mm. Yeah, again, that's why I see, I, I witness firsthand a lot in South Korea that generational interaction and communication is so poor. Mm. And I think this kind of a conceptual obligation such as philopiety, philopiety, and also that respecting elders, they made it a thing under Confucius' uh, tradition. Mm. And that is still um, tradition, traditional values in Korea. Mm. But because of overemphasis on those values and concepts, there is no organic and harmonious interaction and communication between generation and generation. Younger generation have such contempt and a lot of uh, um, somewhat hatred within them towards older generation and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I always uh, uh, had this doubt about this sort of Confucius 
concept because that is that, that's precisely what this chapter is talking about. That that's precisely going against what these virtues trying to <laughs> uphold mm, really. Yeah. yeah. Filial piety kills the love between the parents and the children, really. Yeah. And that's precisely what's really happening. That's why having these concepts itself is bits to purpose, I thought. Yeah. Like, I mean, of course you love your family family members and relatives and <laughs> whatnot. You practice love and kindness no matter what. You Why would you need such concepts? Why do you have to learn there is such concepts yes which itself is so artificial yep well the thing is that when you forget the Tao, as the chapter alludes to and you mentioned before briefly is that everything turns into chaos and so then you need to reorganize with some sort of order Uh, as i said earlier like you know when society forgets the Tao, you know benevolence and and justice are necessary but only from that perspective it's a, again it's an artificial system Lao Tzu's point is kind of you know pointing out here in this chapter that though as you said earlier they, they are good for a society in chaos naturally we don't need benevolence and justice because naturally we would treat each other with love and respect without having to be told to to do that right and so the Taoist is naturally disciplined, so they don't need to be forced or coerced into, into any sort of way of thinking. It's only a society and an individual who has forgot the Tao who needs a certain discipline to behave a certain way in a, in a world of chaos. Mm. So then that begins in the family, that, and then that extends to the society and, or maybe the religion you're part of and then the, the world in general. And this is where all... The troubles begin so in a society that has descended into chaos we kind of lose a perspective of what is naturally good and bad so as children because we have a strong connection to the Tao, we naturally know what is right and wrong but we don't need to be told about it we know not to hurt your friends we know not to do this and that but we don't need a system for that but as we get older uh, we lose contact with this type of wisdom and knowledge replaces this wisdom right and this gives rise to rationalization and also self-deception and we see that all around the world with adults particularly and that's how governments and politics and all that become what they are it it begins on the individual level but you have no strong connection with the actual natural law of the world you live through idealistic views and you know idealism has infiltrated everything right it infiltrates even people's diets these days like people become idealistic about everything and Lao is just like oh no 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 <laughs> no no because if you just live naturally you know what is right for you because you don't have an idealistic view of the world and and as children we don't have an idealistic view of the world what do we want to do we want to just have fun with our friends and this and that, and it's only when the system that our parents impose on us and then the education imposes on us, then we start to know how to play the game according to the systems that are in place. Yeah, I see the the core of the problem with that is the, the very beginning, the very beginning of having such idea of cultivating intelligence. Mm. Again, that in the end materialize the conditioning in mm. uh, individuals. So and again, and that creates more laws and regulations, and it goes going out even more and more divided and more materialistic world. So that idea of having that wisdom, intelligence for the harmonious society mm. itself is the again that is the problem and that creates the yeah the conditioning of uh, individual uh, the, and in the end that creates much more uh conditioned society as well yeah mm. it really does and it begins as from when we're kids and it goes all the way up until 
you know, the day we die, if we don't realize and remember the Tao. And then it infiltrates, as it mentions in this chapter, it infiltrates countries themselves. It infiltrates governments themselves. And a country, if it was harmonious with the Tao, would not need ministers, would not need loyal ministers. Exactly. You wouldn't need that because everyone would be following the way of the Tao. They'd be practicing the Tao in their everyday life. And then you don't want to turn that also in, into an ideal. Mm -hmm. Lao Tzu is just mentioning like the way of naturalness. You don't want to go and turn the way of naturalness then into an ideal. The, the point of Taoism itself is just it, it's a technology to understand your socialization. Mm -hmm. So you're understanding your socialization and Lao Tzu is teaching you about how things actually are according to the way of nature. You've got to get out of your idealistic view of the world, your idealistic view of everything, and just fall in line with nature itself. What is natural for a human life to live on this planet? And, it, and the funny thing is when you, when you come into alignment with that, what is, what is natural for a human life, there's a great freedom in that. Mm -hmm. There's a great peace in aligning with the Tao. And then whatever you're doing in your life, you'll feel an immense energy kind of guiding you in some sort of divine way you don't know what it is but things as joseph campbell said doors will open for you where there were only walls yes. but you have to let go mm. of your idealism you have to let go of your conditioning you have to let go of your socialization to fall in line with mm. that and it's not an easy process for most of us because a lot of us are indoctrinated from birth you are this religion you are this gender you are this race you should act like this this is how we do things in this environment. And this is all the carving and polishing metaphor of Confucius. It's not sticking to the unhewn wood. Does that mean children shouldn't have education? That's not what is being said. But there needs to be an understanding of why the education is there, but an inherent understanding of your own fundamental nature and actually what this education can do to you if you think this is the be all and end all of life, you know, because you can become a serious person and you can turn into a tyrant or you can turn into anyone yes. through this process. Yeah, as I was reading this chapter, kind of came to me the the what Lao Tzu saw the the real ideal society that in his point of view mm -hmm. is exactly how Judo Krishnamurti was talking about what total freedom, the true freedom is. Uh, yet uh, Jidu said the total freedom is being on a pathless land. Pathless, pathless land mean, meaning that you're being free from all that conditioning, free from your own sense of identity, free from um, indoctrinations, being free from any limitation and boundaries which mold you in a certain way within the society when you can break through that obstacles then you can truly be free so being freedom we think as in just do whatever we want eat whatever we want mm -hmm. that's not that's just the like freedom of choice really yeah, yeah, isn't it yeah. it's not real sense of freedom here we're talking about so once you break through your inner conditioning and inner these ideologies which stop you see the world the way it is, then you, uh, that's the path that you need to kind of demolish, pathless, make it pathless, right? Yep. Without any concept, then you can truly be free from yourself, actually. Yourself as in the concrete identity that you created of being who you think you are, right? Yeah. So again, here the latest view of a real, more natural, idealistic world, meaning no artificial laws, no artificial virtues, because there is no need. Nature itself has its own natural laws, which we all follow, no matter we know it or we don't know it, right? So again, Lotus perspective is that once this concept comes in, that's what ruins the, the, the harmonious natural law, the organic nature. Mm. So 
Yeah, breaking through these uh, socializations and social concepts and ideas, how to be, how to behave, to be a good person, mm. good child, whatnot, good father or whatever. These ideas is what's really killing the, your, what you innately already possess naturally, yep. these natural virtue. Exactly. So that when you follow that naturalness of universe, then harmony will just come to place naturally, just like the total freedom, the true freedom. Exactly. Well, you mentioned like parents, right? Do you, everyone knows the answer to this, do you need to learn to be a parent, to be a mother or father? It's innately within you. You know exactly what to do. You know exactly what to do. It's like when we come into this world, we innately know how to move our body around. We even learn language unconsciously. Exactly. We didn't have to learn how to walk, right? We didn't learn we how to walk. We just start walking. Just happened. Yeah. That's the way it is. And the thing is that we're walking down these well-trodden paths. So our identity is accustomed to the well-trodden path. And then the Taoist is off in the bushes going, hey, you know, I got a tea. Come over and have a look. And it's like, no, no, that's, that's dangerous. This path is going to get me there. And all you have to do is walk off the path. Yes. Because, as you said, truth is a pathless land. And as also as what Jiddu said, it's the freedom from the known. So the known is this path, right? It's what we know. But what's outside of that? Because no matter how far you walk down that path, you may never reach that freedom that you, you think. True. Even if it's some sort of religion that you're following, it may not be, it might not take you to moksha, to liberation. Exactly. You may be caught in a bind with, with that religion. It may consume your life. It may actually, in some sense, tyrannize your life because of the, the, the beliefs of that religion. And so when you understand truth is a pathless land, then that's where ultimate freedom is. Mm. And, you know, Judah Krishnamurti himself, especially when you read books like Total Freedom, it sounds like a, like a book on Taoism. Very much so. It sounds like a book on Taoism, doesn't yes. it? Because it's just about the deprogramming of the individual. 100%. And Taoism, as I mentioned, is a technology of, to de deprogramming the identity, the socialization process we've all gone through. Exactly. Overcoming our self, as in, yeah, what we think, who we are. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, guys, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you guys next time.